Now, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says that Israel has accepted a proposal to bridge differences that are holding up a ceasefire and hostage release in Gaza. He made the announcement after meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Isaac Herzog in Israel. Blinken says it's now up to Hamas, whose terrorist attack on October 7th started the current war, to agree to the plan. It is U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's ninth visit to the Middle East since the war in Gaza began over 10 months ago. Following meetings with Israel's leaders, he outlined the proposed next steps towards ending the war. This includes a so-called bridging proposal, which Blinken says should bridge the gaps remaining between the two sides. The, the bridging proposal that um, Prime Minister Netanyahu has, has accepted and we look to Hamas to accept reflects what is in the um, ceasefire agreement that President Biden put before the world uh, back, uh, back in May that's incorporated into a UN Security Council resolution uh, and that makes clear that this process will proceed in phases. Um, a first uh, initial uh, ceasefire over the course of six weeks in which uh, hostages are released, prisoners uh, are exchanged, and negotiations commence on um, the conditions necessary for an enduring ceasefire. But as Blinken heads off to Egypt for the next round of talks, disagreements remain between Israel and Hamas. These include Israel's refusal to withdraw all of its troops from Gaza, a red line for Hamas. Israel would also like to retain some strategic control in Gaza, including along its southern border with Egypt, the Rafah crossing and the Philadelphia corridor. In Gaza, smoke rising above Khan Yunis marks the latest bombardment by Israeli forces. The city in the south of the Strip bears the scars of months of fighting. Its residents have grown skeptical of any attempts by the United States to secure peace. Blinken's visit to Israel will not change anything. Every time we hear it will. But it turns out that there are no negotiations. It's all lies. We suffer a lot in Gaza. And we feel that the Americans and the international community are ganging up on us without mercy. This visit to Israel is just for the U.S. to check in with Israel and to provide it with arms and logistics, so it continues its extermination and war on Gaza. This won't change anything. We are very pessimistic about his visit. Pessimism that grows day by day as the war rolls on. Well, Gerald Feierstein is director of the Middle East Institute's Arabian Peninsula Affairs Programme. He joins me now from Philadelphia in the US. Thank you so much for joining us here on DW. Blinken says Israel has accepted the bridging deal, but so far there's been little detail about specifics. What do you think the current proposal is likely to include? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening, Hannah. Uh, and I think that... You know, as uh, as Secretary Blinken said, uh, the basic framework is the three-phase uh, initiative that President Biden announced about three months ago, uh, which includes the uh, the immediate ceasefire, exchange of prisoners, other issues like humanitarian relief, and is then supposed to go on to uh, more detailed negotiations uh, that uh, that would include establishing a format for governance, security in Gaza, and ultimately, hopefully, uh, the beginning of a resumed Israeli-Palestinian dialogue that would lead to a final uh, resolution of the conflict and the establishment, hopefully, of an independent Palestinian state. But all of those things are in the distant future. And Hamas has accused Israel of moving the goalposts of these talks during previous talks. But are we actually any closer to a deal today? 
Well, it's a, it's a very good question. And, and again, uh, this isn't the first time that Secretary Blinken has said that Israel has accepted proposals only to find out afterwards that, uh, that it was a very optimistic uh, perspective that he was sharing and that, uh, and that we weren't actually uh, on the verge uh, of an acceptance. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see what comes out of the talks uh, in Egypt and then in, in Doha afterwards uh, to see whether, in fact, uh, the Israelis have said yes and whether, in fact, Hamas is prepared to say yes as well. And some observers have also criticized the U.S. for not really bringing enough pressure to bear on Israel to bring about a ceasefire. Is the U.S. really doing all that it can? Well, again, I think that uh, President Biden has been trying to walk a very fine line between uh, between uh, pressing Israel through uh, through initiatives, through drawing, if you will, uh, but not dropping a, uh, a hammer in the form of arms uh, arms secession or or other kinds of of real uh, pressure that would uh, that would certainly create a, a stir in in Israel, uh, but would also create a big stir here in the United States. And you know, keeping in mind that we are uh, at the at the beginning of the uh, ultimate phase of the presidential elections, uh, the president is going to be very mindful not only of what's happening in Gaza and the Middle East, but also, of course, what the impact is going to be domestically. Gerald Firestein, director of the Middle East Institute's Arabian Peninsula Affairs Program, thank you so much for joining us on DW. Pleasure. Michael Singh is Managing Director of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy in Washington, D.C., and a former Senior Director for Middle East Affairs at the U.S. National Security Council. Uh, Michael, Anthony Blinken has called his latest diplomatic push probably the best and maybe the last opportunity for a ceasefire deal. Is that a fair assessment? Well, I think we are hearing more optimistic uh, takes now from U.S. officials, whereas in previous weeks, there had been a lot of concern expressed by U.S. officials uh, about especially the attitude of the Israeli government, uh, worried that perhaps Prime Minister Netanyahu was introducing new issues or moving the goalposts. Uh, I, I take some of this current optimism to suggest that perhaps those gaps have been closed. It's important to remember, though, that, you know, uh, of course, Hamas's uh, reply matters as well. And we've yet to hear a positive or definitive response from Hamas that suggests that they're ready to accept a ceasefire. Uh, Hamas has called it an illusion. Uh, but at a news conference he gave after the talks, Blinken expressed some additional optimism. Uh, let's have a quick listen to what he said there. Just last week, the president put forward a proposal with Qatar uh, and with Egypt to try to bridge the gaps that remain between the parties so that we could get agreement to what the president put out there a couple of months ago. Uh, in a very constructive meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today, uh, he confirmed to me that Israel accepts the bridging proposal. Now, Michael Singh, put this, uh, if you would, in layman's uh, terms for us. What is the bridging proposal and how significant is this agreement with Netanyahu then? Well, I as I said, you know, there have been these differences that uh, have emerged between the United States and Israel over the last several weeks uh, over issues like, you know, for example, who will control and how will it be controlled at the, the Israel, I'm sorry, at the Gaza-Egypt border to prevent more arms from coming into Hamas? You know, how will people be allowed to move around the Gaza Strip uh, after a ceasefire agreement is reached? It, it does sound as though uh, these gaps have been narrowed or closed. And, and what the U.S. has put forward together with Qatar and Egypt uh, is a proposal meant to try to, to sort of make compromises on these types of issues, uh, as well as the many others which are under discussion. And so I take again, Secretary Blinken's optimism to suggest that he made progress in closing these gaps between the U.S. and Israel. Um, but, uh, but we still, as I said, don't really have an indication as to whether Hamas will accept it. I, I think that U.S. officials may hope that Iran, Hezbollah, and other parties in the region, uh, which are maybe are looking for a reprieve from conflict, are looking for a pretext to uh, halt their uh, hostilities with Israel, that they might put pressure on Hamas. Uh, 
but again, it's ultimately Yahya Sinwar in Gaza, the head of Hamas, who's the decider here, and he hasn't said uh, yes on this. Mm. So in your view, what remains the main sticking point on the path to a deal? Well, you know, the sticking point in a, in a sort of near-term sense is waiting to hear from Hamas whether they'll accept this deal, which apparently is acceptable to the U.S., to Israel, uh, to the Egyptian and Qatari uh, mediators and so forth. But I think quite fundamentally, one thing we need to remember is that even though we talk about this deal as involving essentially a ceasefire on the one hand, the release of hostages and the Palestinian prisoners on the other hand, in fact, there is more at play here. President, Prime Minister Netanyahu has, has promised total victory over Hamas, whereas Hamas wants to live to fight another day. And, and reconciling those two fundamental objectives is quite hard. So even if a ceasefire agreement is reached, you know, it's tough to imagine that this won't simply be a prelude to more fighting in the in the months and the years to come without more fundamental changes uh, on the ground there in Gaza. Now, during uh, this trip, Blinken has also repeatedly warned it's time to make sure that no one takes, quote, any steps that could derail this process. Who and what was he referring to? Well, I think the parties he has in mind when he says that are Iran and Hezbollah, uh, because both Iran and Hezbollah have vowed retaliation against Israel for Israeli strikes on their territory, um, but they have so far held off. Now, in, in my view, they've held off in large part because they may not want to fight uh, a war with Israel. They may worry that they would lose or that they would be severely uh, damaged in a, in a war with Israel. Um, but they've promised, essentially, this retaliation, and so they may be looking for a, a pretext to avoid it. I, I suspect that if there is a ceasefire agreement, that both Iran and Hezbollah may take the opportunity to claim credit for it uh, and move on. And I think that's what Secretary Blinken is, Blinken is hoping they'll do. Michael Singh there, the Washington Institute for Near East Policy in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you.